The new Pokemon TCG set, Surging Sparks, is just around the corner, and as is tradition, players in Japan are already playing and enjoying a new metagame with the new cards, one which promises new powerful archetypes such as Pikachu EX and Serial Edge EX, as well as interesting upgrades to already existing decks like the inclusion of Alolan Executor EX into Regidrago V-Star decks. With rotation looming near, but no date set quite yet, Surging Sparks might be one of the last sets before it happens, and so a lot of these new and powerful cards will very likely feature in the game for a very long time. Either way, their first impact will be seen at the Sacramento Regional Championships right after LAIC, and so in today's video we are going to take a look at all the new deck archetypes that are coming out and will be playable then. How competitive will all of these be? Only time will tell, but all the decks featured in this video have all done well at least at the local level in Japan. Don't forget that you can watch videos 24 hours earlier if you become a channel member by following the link in the description below. This kind of support helps me continue to create content like this, so please consider becoming a channel member if you enjoy the content. The new Flygon EX from Surging Sparks features two interesting attacks. First, for a single fighting, Reversing Storm does 130 damage and allows you to switch for a benched Pokemon, and there's also Sonic Peridot, which costs 1 water, fighting and metal energy, and it does 100 damage to all of your opponent's Pokemon V and EXs. While Sonic Peridot looks powerful, the prohibitive energy cost and the low damage isn't really enough to justify playing such a card. Maybe it could be paired with Sparkling Crystal and Frostlust to attack easier and also increase the damage to ability Pokemon thanks to Freezing Trout, but realistically it's still too unreliable. However, Reversing Storm is a very interesting attack that pairs well with Pokemon that have blocking abilities such as Mimikyu's Safeguard or Klefki's Mischievous Lock. The deck should use cards to help pivot back into Flygon EX, such as Rescue Board or Beach Court, in order to continue attacking with Flygon EX whilst denying abilities as well. Perhaps even Iron Thorns could be a useful pairing as well with a copy of Future Booster Energy Capsule. The deck has found some success so far, paired with those two, as well as Bibral for draw support and the new Gastronon with its Stiggy Bind ability to shut down powerful Stage 2 abilities like Pidgeot's Quick Surge, Dustmore's Curse Blast, and even Arcube's Primal Turbo, which affects a lot of the powerful meta decks in the current standard format. With a powerful Arvin engine alongside support from Technical Machine Evolution to set up and Devolution to continue to be disruptive, perhaps this deck has some potential. I personally give this deck a 1 out of 5 rating for competitiveness though, as it might be a little too slow in setting up and the damage output is nothing spectacular, whilst a single copy of Boss's Orders can threaten Flygon EX and also interrupt any sort of soft lock you have on your opponent. The new Sylvian EX from Surging Sparks features two powerful attacks. Its first attack, Magical Charm for a Psychic and two Colorless, makes Sylvian EX a very tanky Pokemon by reducing any damage taken during your opponent's next turn by 100. Its second attack, Angelite, for a Water, Lightning and Psychic, lets you choose two of your opponent's bench Pokemon and shuffle those Pokemon and all attached cards into their deck. However, if any of your Pokemon used Angelite during your last turn, this attack can't be used. On paper, the idea of putting back your opponent's hard-earned resources invested onto demanding Pokemon like Archips or Rage IOV Star back into your deck sounds amazing. The issue is that this powerful effect for Angelite is locked behind the prohibitive attack cost once again. So far, Sylvian EX has only seen plain Lost Box style decks, which can unlock the powerful Mirage Kid as a way to power up Sylvian EX to use either Angelite or Magical Charm. That's great synergy with Sylvian EX in Lost Zone decks, as they already tend to play Psychic, Water and Lightning Energy naturally to use powerful attacks such as Radiant Greninja's Moonlight Shuriken, Sableye's Lost Mine, and Iron Hands EX's Ampu very much. Having a single Eevee on your bench could create a whole new threat level for the deck and also allow it to indirectly deal with a higher HP Pokemon such as Charizard, Dragapult or Pidgeot, which can sometimes be hard for the deck to do so. I personally give this deck a 2 out of 5 rating for competitiveness, as Lost Box seems to be barely surviving as of late, with so much damage to the bench and Regidrago decks having the threat of Curem. Also, historically evolution Pokemon have not been great in Lost Box decks, but perhaps Sylveon can be the exception to this. The new Archalodon from Surging Sparks has a very cool ability that synergizes perfectly with its attack and high HP. With Assemble Alloy, when you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you can attach up to two basic Metal Energy cards from your Discard Ball to your Metal Pokemon in any way you like. A lot of the time, you will use it to attach to yourself in order to use Metal Defender for a massive 220 damage, whilst removing Archalodon EX's weakness during your opponent's next turn. 
This combination is perfect to utilize Professor Turo's scenario after taking a hit with your massive 300 HP and then fully healing and immediately having another Echelonen ready to go without weakness, making it very hard to deal with. Another cool combo for this deck against anything that can't quite one KO it is using Relicant's Memory Dive ability plus Duralodon's Raging Hammer in order to dish out additional damage. Its ability has the extra benefit of being able to attach to any Pokemon, not just itself. And so, Dialga Vista is a great partner for the deck as it can benefit from the various energy being attached in order to power up for powerful Star Chronos and Metal Blast attacks. I personally give this deck a 2 out of 5 rating for competitiveness, because even though many decks could have trouble dealing with its tankiness and perfect combo with Professor Turo Scenario, Raging Bolt has no trouble at all taking down our Childhood on EX very easily and it is safe from a return KO from it thanks to its base 240 HP. And since Raging Bolt continues to be one of the best and most played decks in the format, our Chaladon doesn't have too much hope until Raging Bolt is kept in check. Sir Legiax from Surging Sparks is a very simple yet powerful deck. Its first attack, Abyssal Flames, does 20 more damage for each energy card in your discard pile. Its second attack, Raging Amethyst, does 280 damage and you discard all energy from this Pokemon. While there is some synergy between both attacks, it's just best to focus on discarding as much energy as possible in order to power up Abyssal Flames, with decks playing up to 18 or so energy in order to increase the damage output as there is no maximum damage for Serolege X. A common partner for Serolege is Palkia V-Star, as the deck is free to play different energy types since Abyssal Flames only requires a single fire energy, and thus you can play Radiant Greninja to help discord more energy as well as some water energy so you can have it as a threat combined with Palkia V-Star's Star Portal. The option to have a bench damaging attack is great to make this card less one-dimensional by simply discarding energy and attacking over and over, and provides a different way to threaten an opponent, as well as having Palkia V-Star for possible mirror matches and weakness advantage. With Carmine, Professor's Research, Old Trouble and Earth and Vessel, there are plentiful ways to get a lot of energy in the discard in order to reach 14 to 16 in order to one KO all the big threats in the metagame. However, the question is how quickly can you accomplish this? And thus, I give this deck a 2 out of 5 rating for competitiveness. The new Milotic EX from Surging Sparks is a headache for some powerful decks like Charizard or Dragapult, as its ability Sparkling Scales prevents all damage from and effects of attacks done to this Pokemon by your opponent's Terra Pokemon. To top it off, its attack Hypno Splash does a very respectable 160 damage which sets up 2 hit KOs on almost anything and puts the opposing Pokemon to sleep, meaning there's a 50% chance they won't be able to do anything at all next turn. While the deck's biggest weakness could be the weak Feebas with a measly 30 HP, the Silver Tempest Feebas has the Ascension attack to immediately evolve into the powerful Milotic EX. These sort of wall Pokemon tend to have polarizing matchups with either really good or really bad ones, but Milotic has been combined with other powerful Pokemon of this same style, such as Noivern, Cornerstone, Ogre Pond, Mimikyu, and even Gastrodon for good measure, to have an answer or wall basically everything in the format. This combination technically blocks everything, between abilities, stage 2s, Terra Pokemon, Rulebox Pokemon, Basic Pokemon, and even stadiums and special energy. The real issue is getting the right lock for your opponent's deck. So I personally give this deck a 3 out of 5 rating for competitiveness since it has gotten a lot more relevant results in Japan. The new Hydreigon EX from Surging Sparks is one of the most interesting cards in the set. With its attack, Crashing Headbutt doing 200 damage for a low cost of Darkness and Colorless as well as discarding your opponent's top 3 cards of their deck. Its Obsidian attack though is definitely the more appealing to most, doing 130 damage as well as 130 damage to 2 of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Unfortunately, the Darkness, Metal, Psychic, and Colorless cost is the most prohibitive out of all the Stellar Pokemon EX released so far. While the Obsidian attack looks amazing, its best use case would be similar to Regidrago copying Curem's Trifrost attack to snipe low HP Pokemon, but by the time you are able to use it, it's unlikely you will have enough targets as they will all have evolved anyways. Not to mention, the attack is not as useful to take on big basics, despite setting up a possible win condition over two turns, as it's unlikely 4 Energy Hydreigon EX would survive more than one turn. Despite having the support of Crispin, Counter Gain, and Neo Upper Energy, this attack should be a backup option only, and I think focusing on the more destructive Crashing Headbutt would be best for this attack, doing cost-efficient damage as well as discarding valuable resources that your opponent will no longer have access to. And as is tradition, the deck is initially having success with Pidgeot's Quick Search for support, as well as Dusclops and Dusnor's Curse Blast to increase the damage output or possibly take down a Manaphy to open up the way for the Obsidian attack. 
While the card and deck looks very interesting, it's competing with other powerful stage 2 Terra EXs such as Charizard and Dragapult, which are just as, if not more powerful and a bit more straightforward, so I give this card a 2 out of 5 for competitiveness rating. And finally we get to the star of the set, Pikachu EX. This new Pikachu EX from Surging Sparks seems very powerful thanks to its resolute hard ability as if it has full HP and would be knocked out by damage from an attack, it is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10. This self-preservation ability means the low 200 HP isn't a big issue for the card. Its attack, Topaz Bolt, is also amazing, doing 300 damage and discarding 3 energy from itself. That damage alone is enough to take down all these star Pokemon which are dominating the game right now although it's really only relevant for Regidrago since Palkia and Lugia are both weak to lightning. However, with the help of the new Gravity Mountain Stadium reducing stage 2 Pokemon's HP by 30, now every single meta relevant Pokemon is in range of Topaz Bolt. Even though its ability looks amazing, there are many ways to deal damage in passive ways such as Halucha's Flying Entry, Dragapult's Phantom Dive, Monkey Dury's Adrenabrain and of course Dusclops and Dusnor's Curse Blast, so Pikachu isn't completely safe. And whilst its attack does a lot of damage, it's also hard to power up with a difficult lightning, grass and metal energy cost. The first deck to include Pikachu EX is Lost Box, as the powerful Mirage Gate is perfect to power it up immediately and it has lacked a powerful basic Pokemon that helped one hit KO anything ever since the Amazing Rare Rayquaza roided it out of the format. Growing Money X filled that role for a while, but it is a little too frail compared to Pikachu EX. However, some Pokemon like Charizard and Dragapult are still out of range, so it's necessary to play Gravity Mountain to reduce their HP and let them be KO'd or finish them off later without Lost Mine from Sableye. The next deck featuring Pikachu EX, although not as an attacker but just as a bench sitter, are Maridan decks. These decks want to use Area Zero to increase the damage output of Raikou's Lightning Rondo, and they had to resort to Mewtwo EX to do so. However, Pikachu EX fulfills this role better and is less of a liability thanks to its resolute hard ability. Despite this though, Maridon's bench will usually be filled with liabilities, but it's still strictly speaking a better option than Mewtwo, and some sneaky Maridon lists could end up playing one copy of Grass and Metal Energy alongside Magneton to potentially power up Pikachu out of the blue for a massive to pass bolt attack. And finally, the last tech featuring Pikachu EX is a combination with Bleasy EX and Glass Trumpet, allowing Pikachu to attack in back-to-back -back turns thanks to Bleasy's Happy Switch ability transferring that energy on a Pikachu EX. With its resolute hard ability, it will likely survive an extra turn, and Bleasy has a very hefty 300 HP, which isn't easy for many decks to reach. With Bleasy's support, an Adrena Brain from Monkey Dory synergizing perfectly with Pikachu's resolute hard ability and even healing it a little bit in the process, this deck could be the definitive way to play Pikachu EX in the near future. Will Pikachu EX be enough to put Lost Box back on top of the metagame? What about our resurgence from Raiden as a more useful Terra Bench sitter than Mewtwo EX? Or will it become a standalone archetype combined with Bleasy EX? Only time will tell. But this card is the one that has the most potential, and it might finally be time for Pokemon's main mascot to be considered a powerful threat in the metagame, since it last enjoyed some success back in the tag team era alongside Sacrum, and thus I give this card a competitive rating a 4 out of 5. This should cover all the brand new archetypes coming out in Surging Sparks, however there could be other hidden gems or cards with potential that I might have missed, so I'd love to know what you think of these decks and the Surging Sparks set in general. My next video will cover how existing archetypes such as Regidrago, Lugia and more will incorporate some of the new cards from Surging Sparks, so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet so you don't miss out. I hope this video has been useful for you, and thanks for watching and until next time. If you want to support the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan Store for your online codes. 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab, then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market and Dragon Shield. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyper Bean Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Lotai.